We're out here going to do some comparisons between the S52X and the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. We're going to be testing out some different aspects like dynamic range, overall usability of each of these cameras, and basically cover the whole key aspects so that you can make a better informed buying decision. So we ran into a little bit of a problem. In B-RAW, you can't record open gate and anamorphic with the S52X. So that is a pretty huge downside to the S52X right off the bat. There is no open gate if you want to record in B-RAW. We did end up shooting between the two in H.265, so we will show those comparisons with the Black Magic. You obviously can, which is a huge benefit if you wanted B-RAW and you also wanted to shoot an open gate. I will be comparing B-Raw from both cameras in our next test, and then at the end of the video, I'll share my thoughts on both cameras, the image quality and everything else. For now, it's just flat out comparisons. I did correct the white balance though, because each camera reads white balance differently, so I just set them to be correct. I'm like making a, a YouTube video comparing some cameras, so. It's a lot more interesting filming uh, people playing football than trees, you know? So this was a little weird. The Blackmagic footage looked way more contrasty right off the bat just using the Apply LUT feature in DaVinci Resolve for B-Roll. So I balanced those out because when I used any other LUTs, they were completely fine. What I will say though is the monitor itself was freaking out on me. It was having tons of issues. Here's a real world reaction to the quote unquote finickiness of that monitor on the day of. And then after that, we'll go back to the studio and just have a chat about both cameras. Yeah, this is a field test right here. I've used this monitor before for a shoot, but it was clunky and now it's even clunkier. I'm having some more issues with it. So I really don't enjoy shooting B-roll with this. I just don't enjoy it. It works, but it's a little annoying. All right, we're back at the studio and this was one of the hardest videos I've ever made. And it's not really because one camera is much better than the other or they're crazy different. It's because they are so similar but at the same time, there are key aspects that are very different. It was just hard to come to a conclusion on which one's better or even for me personally, which one I prefer, but it really isn't a cookie cutter answer. So let's get right into it. I know many of you are gonna wanna know about frame rates and all of that, but I will say right off the bat, this is not an extremely technical comparison. I'm not gonna be pixel peeping, zooming into images or anything like that. I'm just sharing real world experience using these two cameras. And some things will get technical, but most of it won't. I might just say blanket statements that most people would make entire long-winded videos about that are super scientific, but that just really isn't me. So if you're looking for that, you can not waste your time and just go to a different video. I know most YouTubers wouldn't tell you to actually get off their own video, but I don't want you to be disappointed. You will be receiving real world experience from somebody that's actually using these cameras professionally. So let's not waste any more time. Let's just keep going. So this portion of the video is gonna be separated into three sections. The first one is its usability, which is how it handles menu systems, all of the creature comforts that come with each of these cameras that make shooting video easier. The second one's gonna be the overall image quality, which in my opinion is the most important part of buying a camera. And then the third one's gonna be who I think each one of these cameras is for. That part I'm really excited about because I'm passionate about saving people money and seeing people buy the right gear for their use cases. So let's go over the first aspect and that's usability. I'm actually holding the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K specifically because I thought this camera was much easier to use in the S52X and that's for many reasons. Yes, the S52X does have autofocus, which is incredibly useful for almost every situation, but the Cinema 6K has this gigantic screen that I already knew was gonna be beneficial, 
But when I was shooting Anamorphic and Open Gate, which the S52X didn't have in B-Raw, I missed focus on many shots with the S52X, specifically because I didn't have this huge screen to help me. So that was a plus for the Cinema 6K, but it doesn't stop there. All of the buttons just made sense on this camera. The focus peaking on the camera just looks so much better. False color, all these different cinema tools that, to be fair, the S52X has many of them, but the Cinema 6K really does feel like a video-centric cinema camera when I was using it. There were many times during the shoot where I looked over at my buddy Lewis, who was shooting BTS, and had to express how much more I enjoyed shooting with the Cinema 6K than the S52X. I feel a lot more comfortable with this camera, especially if I was wanting to shoot B-Roll because as I mentioned prior, I really don't enjoy using that clunky monitor. So this huge monitor paired with all the buttons, all the cinema features in this camera and the menu system make this, in my opinion, an overall easier camera to use, especially if you're not needing autofocus, which leads me to the S52X. It is a smaller camera in the hands. It does feel easier to use in that way. And the biggest selling feature is the fact that it does have autofocus, which is really usable. So they do have their pros and cons, but for me personally, it was much more enjoyable shooting with the Cinema 6K than the S52X. Another thing with the usability is I was expecting these bat, oh crap. I was expecting to be changing out these batteries much more often than I actually did. They last about an hour and 15 minutes, which isn't that far off from the Lumix S52X battery. I get about two hours on a good day with the Lumix S52X. So it really isn't that bad. We shot for about six hours with all of these tests. I did turn the camera on and off when we weren't using it. The Lumix S52X lasted the whole day with one battery and this one was two batteries and still had a little bit left over with the second one. So it wasn't that big of a difference. I just changed the battery out once. I really thought the IBIS was gonna be a winner for me. This does have the best IBIS out there, but being able to control the image stabilization in post in an efficient way was really enjoyable for me. It got rid of most, if not all rolling shutter, and I was really able to dial it in and get some pretty smooth footage without having those weird wobbles or IBIS shifts that the Lumix S52X had. Don't get me wrong, overall, I think I do prefer the IBIS in the S52X, but the gyro stabilization really surprised me and I actually feel comfortable using this on a professional shoot. And that really speaks volumes because I'm really hesitant to use things for professional client work. You can see how this was a really complicated review because one camera does one thing better, but then the other one kind of does it better in a different way. For example, the stabilization. So it wasn't really cookie cutter and I hope you can appreciate the amount of effort that went into this actual review. Without getting into all the details and nuances of each of the images, I will say right off the bat, the Cinema Camera 6K has the better overall image. The way it handles highlights and shadows and just the smooth roll off that you get with your images right off the bat without having to tweak them a ton is really pleasing and to me equates to a better image in almost every single scenario. I would not choose the S52X over the Cinema 6K solely based on specs because unfortunately that's just not the case here. The image does seem more pleasing from the Cinema 6K. But if you're willing to work and massage the image a good amount, then you can squeeze out just a tiny bit more information than the Cinema 6K. But in my opinion, it is negligible. I will touch on the B-Raw versus the H.265 in the S52X because I know tons of people are wanting to know about that and how it stacks up to the Cinema 6K. The B-Roll codec in the S52X does match much more closely to the B-Roll in the Cinema 6K, but it's a lot more difficult to use than the Cinema 6K. You have to have an external monitor that's gonna cost you an extra $800. You have to buy batteries for that monitor or a V-mount solution that makes your camera much bigger. And then you have to deal with another signal in the chain that could go wrong, just like it did for me on this shoot. The H.265 from the S52X on the other hand does look slightly more digital and crunchier. It really isn't that big of a deal though. It looks miles better than most of the other cameras straight out of camera. But with a little bit of tweaking, I can get it to look like the Cinema 6K. 
So overall, neither of these two cameras has a bad image. And I'm not just talking about after you tweak it because you can make any camera look good. Well, theoretically, any camera look good. But straight out of camera, just putting a color space transform or phantom LUTs on top of the camera, which make it look miles better, looks incredible. So you really can't go wrong buying either one of these cameras regarding image quality. But this is a comparison, so not everybody gets a participation trophy, and I'm gonna have to give that one to the Cinema 6K. So, so far we're pretty neck and neck, kind of, sort of, not really, with the Cinema 6K being an easier camera for me to use personally with all the cinema features, the built-in monitor, and everything like that, and the S52X being an easier camera to use in terms of autofocus, internal image stabilization, and with the quality of the image, again, they're pretty neck and neck with the Cinema 6K slightly edging it out in my opinion with everything that I've been seeing personally. Now let's get into who I think these cameras are for. The S52X, this is a camera that I've been recommending to anybody who asks when they have a budget of around $2,000 because it really does have the best image quality in my opinion versus the creature comforts that you can get in a sub $3,000 camera. Now is that still the case? Sort of. It's a little harder to always recommend this camera to everybody because I would recommend this camera to professionals and beginners alike. And now it's a little bit more difficult. It's not as cut and dry. I don't know if I would even recommend the X over just the regular S52. Yo, this camera is so much easier to use. We don't even have to do any more testing. If you want B-roll, get this camera. Obviously it doesn't have autofocus. And if I'm shooting projects that need B-roll, I'm probably not gonna be using autofocus anyways. So I would just recommend the Cinema 6K over this one in that aspect. Also, if you're somebody that's constantly using gimbals, I would recommend this camera over the Cinema 6K, not just because it fits on gimbals better, but because of that autofocus. If you're a one-man band and you don't have a crew, having autofocus for gimbal shots is extremely helpful. There have been many shoots where I was using a different camera that only had manual focus that I chose to not use a gimbal specifically because we didn't have the budget to hire another person and I didn't want to go through the hassle of manual focusing while trying to keep composition, while trying to keep my shot ready. It would have been much easier using a camera like this, getting the shot and not having to worry about all those different aspects like you would with the Cinema 6K. Basically, if you're anybody that just needs autofocus or that's a crucial part of your workflow and you like having stabilized footage straight out of camera from the IBIS, then this camera's for you. This one, on the other hand, gets a little bit more tricky <laughs> because in my opinion, it is a better value proposition. You don't have to buy the Video Assist, which is $800. You don't even have to buy DaVinci. It comes with it. It's a $300 add-on that's just given to you basically for free. And if you really want to go nimble or you're just cheap, you don't even have to buy a monitor, which is a $300 investment as opposed to an $800 one with the S52X. But with this, you really don't even need to buy one. So in my opinion, this is a better value proposition, but it's not for everybody. I would not recommend this camera to any beginner because it does not have autofocus. I know some people would argue with me and they'd say, you should learn how to manual focus right off the bat. Be a serious professional. Don't rely on autofocus. If I started off with only manual focusing with my camera, I probably would have quit simply because I got into videography as an art, I didn't want to learn all these other things at the beginning. And autofocus helped me with that. I could focus on composition and different aspects of the image as opposed to learning how to manual focus with my camera. I would recommend this camera to somebody that values image quality over anything else. The full frame image of this camera is beautiful. The optical low pass filter is a really nice professional aspect of this camera that helps shoot projects that would normally have tons of more ray. And it does soften the image in a pleasant way in my opinion. And all the exposure tools and cinema aspects of this camera make it an easier camera to use if you are a video first shooter. I do personally think that you should have one camera that is capable of having autofocus. It will make your life easier, even on professional shoots for certain shots. But if you already have one of those, or if you have an A-cam, 
you want this as a B cam and you have a C cam that's small and portable, I highly recommend this camera in that aspect. So what's the verdict? This is gonna be annoying, but there really is none in my opinion. I'm not selling the S52X for the Cinema 6K. I'm actually gonna keep them both because I believe that they are complimentary. They really do complement each other. You really can't go wrong with buying either one of these cameras. There are just certain shooting scenarios that work better with one camera than the other. So I hope this video was helpful so that you can kind of discern which one works better for you. But yeah, that's about it. If you wanna see a full review on the S5 II, you can find that video here. And my first impressions on the Cinema 6K will be right up here. But that's all for this one, and I'll see you in the next video.